Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another episode on the channel. Episode two of restoring up this Renix 4 litre Jeep Cherokee XJ. In the last episode, got it running. It sounded very bangy, very knocky, and not in a good way. So in this video, I kind of need to figure out why that is. A lot of people have said the flex plate. So that's gonna be the first thing I take a look at. Finally got there in the end. There it is, the old flexo. Now, the crack is usually all the way up in there around that centre portion and you generally can't see it, but you can um, take a screwdriver and put it here. That's what I've seen other guys do. And they like, try and flex it and it goes doink, 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 makes a noise. And it isn't doing that, but I've got to check those bolts. Oh, it's a loose bolt. That's loose. That's looser than Samantha. Well, I replaced her anyway, so. Well, this one here was extremely loose. And it was out by probably a couple of mil. So I'm assuming that might be my problem. Maybe there's multiples. So I'm going to get this out, I'm going to clean it up, I'm going to put some Loctite on it, I'm going to put it back in. Uh, could you uh, hold that? Yeah. Um, Which side do you want me to do? You want me this, this is definitely a job that's easier with two, unless you have a device to hold the flex plate so you can tighten the bolts. I don't but Megan is holding the harmonic balancer bolt for me so I can make sure I get these bolts tight. All four bolts, in my case, on this flex plate were completely loose. I've also tried to make the flex plate move and creak as I've rotated it, and it doesn't appear to be doing anything, which is a good sign, meaning I don't think it's cracked yet. But now that's sorted, it's time to take a look at the fuel pressure regulator and figure out why it's completely blocked. Although I have a sneaking suspicion that it's actually totally fine. The reason being is if you look at this picture here, from the references I've seen online, it's marked that the fuel in is at the front of the rail and the fuel out back to the tank is at the back. And I'm not sure this is totally correct given the way my fuel regulator is operating, but I need to look at it further to know for sure. Interesting enough, uh, I can put air through the other way. Yeah, it's opening at 39 psi exactly where it should. Maybe the rail runs like that, where the fuel goes through that, enters that side and comes back through here. So this is running in reverse, so it's regulating the pressure in the rail and only releasing it when it reaches 39 psi. I feel like I've clearly misunderstood something, or I must have interpreted information incorrectly. But regardless, the regulator is working absolutely fine, it's clean inside, and I don't need another one, so that's perfect. But I need to run the engine now, get it hot, get the oil circulating around the system, get rid of any slime and gunge that's built up in it, and also clean out the cooling system. And in order to do that, I need a cooling system that's intact. Still so much work to do. I'm just really getting this thing kind of running at the moment. And once it gets in the garage, I'm going to strip the thing down and uh, start going over it, start changing vacuum lines, changing kind of anything that needs changing, cleaning it up. Well, it's time to put this back in. As you can see, looking a little better than before, but it's all superficial. In, in the long, well, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of this stuff needs to be changed um, because, uh, yeah, it just isn't looking so good. I think that goes on there like that. That'd be right, yeah. And then we'll put this in.
It's a stupid Jubilee clip. There it is. This fuel filter definitely needs changing, but I don't have a new one right now, so I'm just going to have to put the secondary one in place. Off you come. Forever. I hate you. Don't spray me with grossness. Ugh. Tanks in, lines are connected. I'm gonna run some fuel through it, see what comes out the other end. <sighs> Clean it out a bit. I haven't actually bothered to check this yet. I know some of them ain't gonna work, but. That's definitely the fuel out. This is the fuel into the engine, because here it comes. That looks like Uncle Edna's piss bowl. Oh, I thought it was getting... Oh, chill out. It's Uncle Edna's ghost. He's, uh... I thought it was getting cleaner, but um, it isn't. It isn't getting cleaner, I don't think, anyway. The flow's all right though, but that is some that is some ghoul looking benzene, isn't it? Well, I've got the fuel running pretty clean. Um, it's not really, really clean, but it's it's almost there. Um, I've had to run quite a bit of fuel through the system actually. Bit of a waste, but I um, guess we start up. That was the start motor. And the earth that I connected on the jump cable. It's crap. Didn't like that. <laughs> Sounds so much better. Bit of oil on the exhaust manifold, no heat bed, that's alright. Sounds fantastic compared to how it sounded before. So the flex plate was the answer. Thanks guys. Well that is a relief isn't it? That engine is sounding a hell of a lot better than it did when I first started the vehicle up and if you listen to this clip If you hadn't already have heard that that's what it sounded like on first start up and uh, I wasn't sure what to make of it everybody was sort of mentioning this flex plate and I was thinking well I hope it is that because it's a lot of noise and it was the flex plate there is still a little bit of a tick but I think that's just the lifters could be something like an idler pulley or, or a bearing gone there it can be anything really but nothing's coming from that bottom of the engine so hopefully nothing serious but I've just got a couple more jobs to do or in fact I have more than that but one is clean up this valve cover I had to put this in the fire to burn off the sludge it was so coked up with garbage um, and actually these vents here these crank vents are are blocked so or one of them isn't the other one is so I've got to take those apart and clean that maybe I'll give it a lick of paint the other one is this thing here this like valve that stops coolant going into the heater core in the summer um, I guess it's some sort of temperature control climate control shite I mean it looks awful it's broken anyway I'm eliminating that I'm not going to go over to uh, open or closed system, I can't remember what it is yet, where you put a 91 and up radiator in. I'm not going to go down that road just yet, but I've got these little brass three ways. So I'm going to rig something up. So I finished hooking this all up and it isn't looking that pretty, but this is what I've got going on so far. You can see where I've kind of eliminated that climate control valve or whatever it's called, but I don't want to do anything permanent at the moment because I want to buy some new hoses and get a nice clean system put together. But for the time being, I'm going to put some water in, just run it through, clean the system out. This isn't the easiest system to fill. 
And by the way, I am using a brand new jerry can, so there's no fuel in this. But it does seem like it would be much harder to fill with that climate control device. At least with open lines, I can burp the system a little bit easier. And it still looks like there's quite a lot of glycol actually in the radiator too, which makes sense, obviously. So at least there's some coolant in the system and it's not just water. <laughs> Well, there we go, a bit more work on the four litre Renix, um, sounding a hell of a lot better now that flex plate's bolted up. Um, all the bolts were loose, one was sticking out about two mil, sticking out quite far, sticking out further than me. So, um, you know, that's you know a really big weight off my shoulders because I was thinking if I've got a cracked flex plate and I've got to replace it, I've seen people doing it online because I've been looking it up whilst figuring this out trying to figure it out and, and I just thought Jesus that looks like a bad job I've already pulled the transmission on this and put a, a low mileage AX15 in it and put the other one on the bench to rebuild it so you know pulling transmissions in a garage like this can be difficult but that's another thing about this project I'm, I'm approaching it a lot differently than I'm approaching this when I first got this thing I went at it hard for years the Jeep I mean and uh, basically it, it kind of kills your wallet. It's just a very expensive money pit adventure. Um, and as fun as it is, if you don't have the money to sustain such a thing, um, even if you're doing the work it's yourself, it costs a lot of money in materials and also time, time away from family. Um, you see me working on these vehicles a lot, but, but the thing that you may not realize is like, this is another side of my job, um, you know, doing YouTube as well as working at the garage and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm doing this while everyone's at work. You know, when they get home, when my wife and son are home, it's family time in the evenings and it's always family time at the weekends without question. You know, the reality is, is as I want to approach this slowly and even though I've been going at it pretty quick um, in these last two episodes to get it running, the reason being is it's September in a, in a week or so and then it's October and then the snow comes. And when the snow comes, it could be a meter, it could be two, you never know. Um, it's unlikely, but it's happened in the last few years. Basically, if that gets buried, I'm not going to be able to move it because the tractors come and they're going to push the snow and it's very difficult to, to get the vehicle out. And basically, it's going to be there the whole winter and I won't be able to work on it. So I want it mobile so I can get this tank out of here, I can move the other vehicle in and I can basically rotate them around and use the garage to maintain both vehicles work on that project in the meantime over the winter and continue using this one to go out and do my overlanding winter adventures with. Just winter itself is my favorite time of year here in Sweden. It's beautiful, the air's clean, the fishing's not so good. I'm, I don't really like ice fishing, sorry guys, but I prefer the fishing over the summer. You know, so obviously I don't wanna miss out on that. Um, and uh, I've got to approach it slow or else I'm gonna be broke. and My missus is gonna kill me even though she is super excited that hearing it run. She's been out here many a time helping me with little things, but I've seen her looking up ways in which to turn it into like a camper, but keep it stock. So like have a platform system in the back, like a bed she can take out. And, you know, she's pretty excited about it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, never know Max might be into it, but maybe by the, as someone said, by the time Max is like 15, you might not even be able to drive that vehicle anymore. Same with mine. You know, everything's going electric now and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the future is for these kind of engines. I mean, I know in some countries they've, they've basically said anything before 2000 is not allowed on the road anymore. So, you know, this is 99, that's 1990. Even though that's tax free in Sweden, I might not be able to enjoy it for that long. So we'll see. But 
On the diesel, I've got a little bit more work to do. So coming up, I'm going on a big trip with this for about a week. I've just done another engine tune on this and Jesus, the power it's making now, I've got to watch it. I just adjusted the boost a little bit and the fuel a little bit and uh, and, and the timing again, just a, just a touch. I'm always playing around with this stuff. I'm sorry for those of you who are sort of following the, the diesel build and you're thinking for, for God's sake, Mike, like when is it going to end? But it, it never will, I'm sorry. But again, I've talked a lot. I can see eight minutes 46 on the camera, probably double the length of this video. And uh, I just want to thank you all for your advice. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the vids. Appreciate your support. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Take care.